Hi, I'm Dr. Ashley Ross. I'm an associate professor here in urology at Northwestern Medicine. And I thought I would talk about a fairly interesting case that uh, I've seen recently. So the, the patient I want to talk about is a gentleman who's 63 years old and he was diagnosed with prostate cancer a few years before he came to see me. He had a prostatectomy at an outside institution and after the prostatectomy, it had shown that he had um, locally advanced disease. So he had disease that had seminal vesicle invasion. Um, there was a positive margin and he had higher Gleason scores. So his Gleason grade group was four. His first PSA after prostatectomy didn't go to zero and instead it natured around 0.3. They had done a PET scan, which at that time was an Oximin PET scan that did not show any metastatic disease. And so they performed salvage radiation therapy. They did not combine that with hormonal therapy at the time and his PSA would continue to increase. He then came to see me when his PSA was roughly about five and we talked about different options for what we would do next. Uh, at this time, the uh, imaging with PET-PSMA had been approved. Um, this is a, uh, we use um, a, a Polarify, which is a F18 labeled PYL compound. And we decided to get that imaging with PET-PSMA. Imaging demonstrated, as you can see here, uh, only one area of increased activity. And this area of increased activity was um, a lymph node that was near the hilar region of the lung. Um, and it was fairly suspicious for um, prostate cancer being metastatic. This would make him M, as in Mary, 1A disease, low volume metastatic. So we did a couple of things to try to confirm that. Number one is um, we talked to our interventional, um, uh, inf inf interventional pulmonologists that were able to do a endobronchial um, biopsy of this lesion. So they went through the bronchial and then they did a FNA. That did show a likely prostate cancer that showed adenocarcinoma that was positive with NKX 3.1. And now we're looking at a gentleman that has low volume metastatic disease after complete treatment to the, um, to the pelvis. And there's a real question of like, how do we treat this gentleman? For him, he's seeing one of our medical oncologists, Dr. Vanderwill, also with Northwestern Medicine, and one of our radiation oncologists, Dr. Sean Sajdev. And in a multidisciplinary approach we're gonna to take to this, is the plan is to do systemic therapy for finite duration, plus stereotactic radiation to this lymph node. Um, now, currently there's no major standard of care in this, uh, in this area. There are some clinical trials phase two showing that maybe radiation therapy alone might benefit some of the men when there's less uh, metastatic sites. But most of us believe, believe that that should be given with some course of hormonal therapy. And given that there's um, level one evidence that in fulminant metastatic disease, bimodal hormonal therapy, usually with androgen deprivation therapy, plus some other um, androgen receptor signaling inhibitor you know, for example, like apalutamide or, or abiraterone or enzalutamide can be combined to improve outcomes. We're often thinking about a, a definitive time course on that bimodal hormonal therapy with the radiation. And in fact, this gentleman has been considered for a clinical trial looking at exactly that. So, you know, even though these cases are becoming more and more common, I think it's an interesting case that shows how we're furthering the kind of advancements we're making in technologies and what we have available to really understand the patients and then make individualized approaches to their treatment. Thank you so much for your time. Uh, and uh, it's a pleasure to present this case with you.